Okay, I think we're live. Uh, hey everyone, this is the Node.js tooling meeting. It's Friday, February 18th. Uh, oh, now we're live? I don't know. Uh, anyways, yeah, let's uh, let's get to it. The first, um, first on the agenda, so I mentioned actually when we started, I was waiting for people and I was just cleaning some stuff up. So there was this issue about uh, test failures in uh, FS uh, yeah. render recursive. Um, and I know Ben, you put up a PR for that. Um, so I actually just followed up on the original issue to ask if that had actually resolved the problem. Um, uh, there's yeah, the problem still seems to be happening. Oh, okay. Uh, it doesn't, and it doesn't make that much sense. Well, I'm not quite sure what's doing it. I had said, I have an idea of at least to try to make the problem easier to debug, which is, uh, serializing i think it'd be interesting to serialize the tests right now they're running in parallel and, and I'm, I'm wondering if there's just windows there's a bunch of logic inside of rimder for windows that retries if there's contention on the folder which we pulled over from the rimraf library and this failure seems to happen periodically i'm guessing it has to do with more than one thing trying to delete the folder at once and it hitting its maximum retries on that uh, check for contention. So I don't know, I thought it might be worth serializing it and seeing if the bug goes away. Just a thought. Yeah, at least it might make it easier to might make it easier to debug at least. So I think that'd be good. A good thing to try. Yeah, that definitely um, seems like a plausible explanation anyways. Yeah, I don't I just thought maybe there's like maybe three things are running at once on Windows and then they step on each other's toes and then we reach mm. the timeout and, and it never deletes or something. It's just a thought. Um, so okay. action item, I should actually do what I said I was going to do, or if anyone wants to jump in and do that, but I think it's like, it's different than how you usually write tests in node. I think they tend to be parallelized for callback based tests, like just by the, the way the test suite works. But I think basically we'd want to kind of wait for one to finish before we do the next it might be an interesting thing to try even just to get more information. Yeah. Uh, uh, what's actually failing is the cleanup step after the tests, funny enough, not the tests themselves, which is really interesting. So, so it's like, I think the error is coming from the last step in the tests where it tries to clean the folder basically. So, I don't know, someone digging into it would be good. Uh, I hate having them turned off. Oh, sorry, Ian, I'm talking over is that, Oh, is that what happened? They're just disabled now? Yeah, they're just marked as flaky in, in Windows only. But it means, I mean, it means we could break Windows more because it's because we're not running the test suite. Right. Uh, OK, anything else about that one? Nope, just help wanted. Uh, OK. Uh, next up on the list here, we've got recursive reader. I think uh, that's been slowly chugging along. Um, there's a draft PR up for it now. Uh, it's 41.43.9 in Node Core. Um, I think Ian has been, or Ian, Ethan, uh, has been slowly uh, chipping away at uh, making it something that he feels like he can get it uh, get done fully and then merged in and then iterate on it from there and subsequent PRs. Um, I think I, well, I'm going through the comments now. It's been a few days apparently since I've looked and there's been progress. Uh, it's been like a month since I've looked and there's been progress. Um, one thing I think I do agree with is I think it should probably land with the promise API, um, which is, is feedback I think Ben gave. Um, I, I, I think, we should be landing. We should not be landing new APIs without Promise APIs. Um, so that that's the only one, uh, only one I have, um, or only additional feedback I have. But yeah, it seems to be going pretty well. Um, so yeah, excited, excited for this for sure. There was some feedback in the thread that which I agreed with as well, which was just kind of a point of process that it would be better to add this method to. 
the fancier way of doing here. Let me actually page it into memory. There are two methods for reading all the contents of a folder. There is reader and opender. Oh, interesting. And I believe, and I I didn't believe, know about that. And I believe the, the benefit of opender is that it's, it doesn't page everything into memory. So, so, if, if, so if you do reader on a, like a huge directory, mm -hmm. it, will, uh, it will just pull that whole thing into, into memory and can, you know, just has issues. Yeah. So, yeah. so, so the recommendation people gave was just use opender, everything else exactly the same. Mm -hmm. But you, but you'd have, but it would be a, like an async iterator instead of a pull everything into memory, which a couple of people th recommended that. And Ethan sounds on board for it too. So yeah, uh, I think he said he pushed it. Or maybe I maybe I missed that. Uh, maybe we just didn't I, update the title or something. Yeah. Got you. Yeah. Anyways, I don't think there's anyone just. It seems like it has buy-in from a bunch of people. Ethan's cool with that slight change. Uh, yep. so, so I think it's just a matter of when he has time to work on it. Probably. Um, yep. I I did. I learned, is, I, am I misreading it in that he did uh, the thing comment from 18 days ago is saying that he did that or uh, is that still pending? Right. Maybe he did it and just hasn't pushed it yet. That's probably, oh, okay. probably what it is. Yeah. Gotcha. But but is, but I read it as as he's okay with the approach and and it's gonna got gotcha. you. Actually, yeah, um, right um, above that, there's complete recursive open door sync uh, and there yeah. changes as well. So yeah, that's I I, I was confused by that. Yeah. Yeah, I'm looking oh, at. The, it, it, oh oh right. yeah, maybe I'm wrong. Oh yeah, maybe he did push all that stuff. I definitely see a call to open door sync. Oh, and, story checks out. Yeah. So, yeah, it looks cool. like maybe that's done already. Why don't we just change the title of the PR then? Let's yes, change the title. Yeah. Re recursive. Uh, well, yeah. I feel like there it's multiple things now. Well, it, is it also? But it's also doing reader. So it's not just read uh, open. Dir, oh, is I it gonna? Think. Is it gonna do both? I think he's doing both and dir as well. Okay. Which I don't. I don't know what that is. Uh, I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna that. That high and read their stuff, but uh, I'll change the title and someone can fix it if I'm wrong. But yeah, yeah, it sounds yeah. like I have no objection to. I don't. I, I certainly think having it in both would be cool. So, yeah, I think it is in both. Yeah. Someone went back and switched uh, copy dirty using open dir, and it just worked as a drop in replacement. Mm. So because that's something someone had asked us to do and I, I went to go do it when i had a few minutes and it, someone had already done it so mm -hmm. it's nice kind of cool yeah uh open is a new api to me i'd never heard of it so. yeah same i didn't know that existed uh cool yeah i i do agree and i'll, I'll comment this on uh i i think we need we should land with the opender or sorry not the opener uh the promise api i i think that we should I, I might block on that, but uh, it depends on if Ethan's uh, able or willing to, I guess, because, you know, I don't want to block the feature landing at all, but I, I, I think we should have that. Um, I agree. Someone can always submit a PR against their branch, too. Like, I've seen that before. Yeah. If, if, any, if, it's like, if, if, if mm. someone happens to have the cycles, like, can always yeah. make it a tag, tag team in the PR, get two things landed. I do think we should try and get that in. Also, if I remember correctly from the Rimder stuff, it's uh, not not too difficult to add the promise version. Basically, just wrap the um, callback version. Yeah. Uh, OK, anything else on that one? No? OK, uh, so next on the agenda is recursive copy. Any, any changes on that one lately, Ben? I seem to have buy-in if I want to make it, if I want to call it stable. So it might just be worth going back and calling it stable. Oh, the reason I was saying I might not call it stable was because someone had had suggested on Twitter we switch it to Opender. And then I was like, oh, I should go switch it to Opender. And then someone had already done it like a few weeks ago. So I don't think there's any real blocker on calling it stable. Uh, Maybe which thing? Just, Didn't someone uh, copy? Okay. Sorry. Was there something open already? Is there a bug open for it right now? Did I miss? Open a bug. Um, 
can't remember exactly what happened there. It's like it was like a while ago, like a few months ago, um, and we weren't really able to get a good reproduction from them. If I'm remembering correctly. I think that was a different thing. Okay. I have this line. Yeah. Oh, I do see one copy. Oh no, that's different. That's copy file sync. I forget what it was. It was some. It was a completely different file system okay. API call that that was having issues. It was like I forget what it was, but it, but it was completely different. It wasn't okay. copy. Um, the I guess the previous issue was not supporting the like buffers for paths or something, but we decided yeah not to do that. James Snell said that he'd probably be okay with it going to stable without supporting buffers because it's kind of a fringe feature. And he, and he thought it would be like, wait until someone says they need it. And then if someone has a good cause for it, then, because it's not going to be trivial to do. So it, it might be better to do it when we're asked to do it. And supporting that would just be like an additive change anyways, right? Correct, yeah. Yeah, okay. I mean, that seems reasonable to me. And our implementation in RimRaf already doesn't, like RimRaf's been in Node for a few years now, and it doesn't have a proper buffer implementation. So our, RimRaf, yeah, I think RimRaf suffers from a similar problem. So uh, basically, the file system join method that's used to do recursive stuff. So if you're doing recursive RM, you're like joining a bunch of paths together to expand out to the recursive depth of the folder. That doesn't work properly, I would say, probably in RimRaf if you're using a buffer for the path instead of the a string for the path. And and most of our file systems happen to support calls happen to support a buffer. I think it has to do with non uh, non Latin character sets, but we we support UTF-8 strings. So I'm not quite sure what non Latin file systems can't do Unicode paths. I'm, I'm, I'm not actually, I, I don't know how to make this a requirement for us or how to test for it, basically. Like, I think you need to have a certain, you need to have formatted your file system in a certain way. And it's probably, and, and I think it had to do with like some, uh, like some like maybe Japanese character sets had issues. So mm. Which I think we could probably go to stable, and but we should keep our eye open if anyone runs into this issue and we know what it is, and we can probably fix it pretty fast, which is going to the trouble of adding buffer support. Um, so. It would be good if we do want to make that not experimental, we could do that before, I guess LTS for node 16 isn't for a while. Uh, so we have lots you of time. You mean no, node, or did you want to get it in for node 18? Uh, that's soon, right? That's April. Yeah, that maybe that's the one I was thinking of. In April would be Node 18, and then, uh, yeah, when's a year from that would be? It's every year, April every year. Like what happens in yeah. October? Something happens. Uh, in uh, uh, twelve or no? Uh, the the new LTS branch is cut, but it's not LTS yet. So the new LTS release, so twenty becomes current. Okay, and eighteen would become LTS then. Uh, no, eighteen would be eighteen becomes LTS in April. Oh, or no, wait, 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 wait. Sorry, my brain. Eighteen ex eighteen exists in April, right? Like, is it, does yes, eighteen yes. you it's can't install eight yet? Yes. So that's when you like. If it's best to get in at the very first release, otherwise you have bugs for the next mm -hmm. five years of people who have somehow installed a pre-LTS version of the platform and complain. Right. Like I'm running a version 18.0.0 dash beta zero zero, and it doesn't have this feature yet. Why not? Right. Like, yeah. Okay. So if we unflag it for the first release of Node 18, that would be ideal. Yeah. But I mean, it's, in this case, it's mostly docs, so I don't think it matters that much. Like, for, <laughs> but oh, it's more like if it's a. I don't think we have to do any. I don't think we have any command line that. Uh, so it's experimental, yeah. Experimental in documentation only features. Yeah, I believe so. Okay. Yeah. But right, TLDR, cool. I think it would be worth trying to do that as part of eighteen. That'd be cool. Yeah. That's really good to me. Uh, okay. Anything else on that, or should we move on? 
Move on. Move on. Yeah. Okay. So last and but not least on the agenda, as per usual, is uh, argument parsing. I think it's unlikely we get an incident at 018 because because it feels like every time we're starting to like get some momentum, like we we get to some some things that I think are going to take a few more weeks of discussion. So yeah, I would a big increase in activity on that repo, which is good. Um, but yeah, lots of discussion points being raised. This is the problem with building argument parsers. <laughs> yeah, there's lots of arguments. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, the, the, I would say the, the big sticky one that's that's happening right now is uh, I'm just seeing if it's even, maybe someone merged it. Oh, no, no, it's still up. In. Okay, cool, cool. Which uh, Aaron has made it. So issue number 63. Aaron has made a, I'm just thinking of Darcy's replied. I think Darcy has been quite busy. Mm -hmm. uh, Aaron's made a case for us going away, switching to using an, an options bag for configuring the argument parser. Yeah. I think it solves some problems to be perfectly honest, because like it would let us do strict mode, which, uh, Jordan, LJ Harb has been making a really strong case for strict mode, and he's kind of convinced to me that strict mode might be the right way to go. Um, and I'll tell you why, because, because we're requiring that you specify with with value, like we, we kind of require that you we kind of require that you say what you want, because we require that you say these options accept a value, these options accept a flag. We're kind of already requiring that of a person. So strict mode kind of makes sense at that point because unless you've mm -hmm. defined what you accept, your program is going to not behave maybe as intended, or, or it would be rare for someone not to define the options they need. I think. Um, I don't know. Maybe there's an argument. I guess there's an argument to be had around strict mode, and there's an and there's an argument to be had around whether you should configure it with an options bag or a. Uh, the, like the way we're doing it now, where you have the key that is an array, basically, like the width value, and it's an array. The and there's a few other things that take an array. Uh, oh, I remember the argument. If we do support strict mode, which LJ Harb is making a strong case for, you need a way to define flag arguments as well as arguments that take values. Because we don't really have a way today. If 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 we do strict mode, you, we now immediately need to be able to define both all our val arguments that take values, and all our arguments that take uh, take uh, booleans, or else you can't have booleans in strict mode, right? So, at that point, you need like a with value array and like a with flag array, which starts to, it starts to maybe be just nice to define all the arguments and say what they are. Like, is it a boolean or is it a is it a string? Like, like maybe have a type argument instead. Um, anyways, Aaron makes a case in that issue. Aaron makes a case in a few places. Uh, the link to issue number 45, his PR number 63. And I don't know, he's making a good case. I think uh, people should join the discussion on GitHub. Just trying to figure out what the current options that we take is, is it just an array? It's, it is an, it's sorry, it is a bit in options. It is like an object, but it's, uh, it kind of, it's instead of defining it. Yeah. yeah. Oh, sorry, go ahead. No, it just looks like it's an object that has some properties that are arrays, uh, rather than defining the, the, the commands themselves. Exactly, which I kind of agree. It might be more ergonomic. Like I think that was an interesting design decision, and I think that it would kind of grew out of like how simple can we make this? And then it turns out that as soon as a few people trying to use it make a few suggestions, it starts to get kind of out of control because you now have to have more and more fields that yep. have something in an array, right? Yep. So at that point, it's like maybe we should just be defining. The options themselves and, and saying how they should behave. 
instead of I finding them in three different places. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I kind of agree with this. It, it's also just like, I don't know, thinking about this from like how I would uh, try to have this explained to someone who's just starting programming and like, you know, CLIs are like a first step in Node. I feel like having it explained once is like the more logical thing. Uh, it's something that'll make be easier to like rock conceptually for them. Uh, and then I think in terms of long-term maintenance, it also kind of, it, it centralizes things a bit more closely, uh, which I think is good. Yeah, I tend to agree too. I, I think what it does mean though, is we need like you to chime in Joe and we need to get, try to get Darcy to chime in and, and Rui maybe yeah. because, because everyone's like, everyone kind of decided on how they, it was going to take options. And now we're kind of, it, this is a pretty major change in yeah. how it would take options. Right. So, um, yeah. Uh, so it makes me think that trying to rush this over the finish line in a month might be, not be likely. So maybe node 19 is more likely. Yeah. No. Which, yeah. So I think uh, to answer the question from earlier, node 19 ships in October, uh, 18 becomes LTS then, and then 20 ships in next April. Uh, and then, yeah, that's like, continuous. well, so maybe we aim for 18 LTS and 19, the very first release of 19 for parse args. And then we have a few more months to, to hammer out the design. I mean, it'd be nice if we could get it done before April, but I, I don't think we will, uh, but it'd be nice. I think we can, we can try to aim for that. Uh, and if we can, if it's not going to happen, that's fine. Uh, like it, what are we, we're February 20th today. I mean, we have an yep. entire month. I think what we need is to, to prod Darcy or Roy and, and get them to get in, in the mix there, I think. Yeah. And LJ Harv has been pitching in a ton and, uh, I, I think I would happily compromise on the strict thing personally. Like he's kind of convinced me about this, maybe strict being the default behavior. There, there's another person making a strong case for strict as the default well, can, behavior too. Can, can you explain that? I, I don't necessarily understand what the strict thing is. Could you give me a little bit of context on that? Cause I, I missed the mistakes. Yes. I apologize. It is basically, you have to have defined all the options your program takes. So, so you have to, you have to say, I take these four different things. Got you. And, and if you don't, and if you provide something that's not one of those four things, then it yells at you. With, yells at you. Got you. I mean, yeah, that seems like a, a good. What what's the downside to not having that be the default? So I'm like fixing my micro. So some people use like minimist or yargs as, as with no configuration at all, and just just to get a ba an options bag out of it, and then their their command line program is just parse whatever I was given, and then do stuff with it, and they don't define anything like like. Interesting. I, uh, so it that's means, terrifying. It means, you, <laughs> it means your arg, it means your argument parser is literally just like one line with no configuration, which is kind yeah. of a neat look. If you're writing the simplest of program, where you're like, just to, you just want someone to pass in the flag h or something. Yeah. You, you don't even have to define that you take the flag h. You just parse it, and if someone runs your program passing in an h, it will do what you expected it to do. Mm -hmm. um, the inverse argument that uh, Jordan's making a case for, and as well, someone from TC39 is actually making, giving us a lot of feedback uh, right now to uh, someone I know from TC39. Uh, what's their name? Kevin Gibbons. Oh, nice. Uh, he's, he's making a strong case for having to define stuff as well. Mm -hmm. um, the compromise yeah. might be that we parse it either way, but we've populated an error field. If, if you if it hasn't been configured so like it doesn't throw but you get an error if you if you haven't mm. defined stuff i i yeah i don't know i i'm probably on board with strict that yeah i thought the like array of errors would be the non-strict behavior that makes sense yeah that makes sense and i guess so i guess the real question is is it strict by default or loose by default. Um, two people making a two people of making a strong argument for strict, I would go either way because I want to get this done. Yeah. So, yeah. Whichever yeah. way has less barriers. Yeah. I yeah, agree. yeah, exactly. Um, I mean again, how often does that use case come up? 
of uh, I, I tend for- to be, I tend to have like not turn on strict with yargs to be perfectly honest until my command line programs used by tons of people just mm-hmm. because like I do have I think strict set for like C8 and a bunch of the CLIs mm-hmm. I make I think NYC I think is strict as well but I don't know what? It's, I don't know LJ Harv says it, never in a million years would he ever read a CLI without strict and it would be the worst decision anyone ever made <laughs> <laughs> uh, and so he's making a pretty he's making a, a strong argument and you know what he's kind of winning me over Jordan's good it's at like, that yeah, yeah. I, can't, well, uh, I can't make a I can't make as strong yeah. of an argument for why you'd be lazy and not configure it like I, I don't yeah. I don't know that there is there is there is one I don't know <laughs> yeah I, I I am I'm fine with strict I think I would I agree that I would like to hear from Roy and Darcy I also think that for I mean I know that they're you know they're explicitly interested in using this and I think they're fine to set whatever as whatever they want as they're fine to write that code so they don't, probably don't care yeah at least well, we, yeah well we just like if anyone wants to make a really strong case for loose by default and yeah. then someone can make that case but I would compromise on it and then the one place I won't compromise is and that I'm going to push on is like I don't think we should have a requirement that like npm's already adopted it before we pull it into node, oh, I, which I saw that I saw that discussion happening. Where was that? Uh, that was in the the Slack. Oh, I I don't th- I don't agree with that. Yeah, I mean, I think that was just but, partially because Darcy was saying he wanted to adopt it asap, and gotcha. I think the, the the sentiment was it would be good to have some people using it for mm-hmm. when we you know uh, 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 propose it, um, but I don't think it needs to be a strict requirement per se. Which I kind of agree. Like, like I was convinced from that discussion to start trying to write a shim for Yarks parser, and I've learned a ton trying to do that because I found like some rough edges. So, so I should finish that work to write the shim. I, I think. Um, I was also thinking I'd kind of like to move C8, which is a command line I run for. I make for argument par- or for uh, code coverage. I was thinking I kind of wanted to try to move it to parse args. That'd be cool. Because because it would get rid of most of the dependencies in C8 because mm-hmm. a ton of the dependencies are for Yargs. Mm-hmm. Oh, this is a complete non sequitur. <laughs> but I actually had a, it, I had another really cool idea too, which was someone was suggesting that Yargs just be able to generate uh, the help documentation. Like, like so you could just generate mm-hmm. what the command line options available would look like. But I was thinking I could do that to pre-generate what the help message would look like with something like Yargs, then mm-hmm. just put it put it inside a program like C8 that has no dependencies and just put it in uh, template strings. But you can generate the template string that will be your command line ar- application for, with some secondary program like Yargs. So like your actual CLI has no dependencies, but you're, except for parse arcs. But, it but you still have like, a, yeah. but it has, but it has really dev depths. Yeah, exa- exactly. Yeah. It has like dev depths that generate your pretty template string command line argument for you. Command line <laughs> argument program. Nice. But, do, I don't know. Do I'm we excited want for this. to do that generation? Probably not. Like, Cause I think that would just like, well, I, I think a program that is like built on top of parse args, I think would yeah. make a ton of sense to do it. And like, yeah, and, maybe, would, yeah. and you're right. You're right. Maybe it's like a, like a, dev thing you can do inside of parse args, mm-hmm. like the the library parse args, but not the thing we bundle into Node.js, maybe. I don't like think we should like... make a separation there. I do not. I, I will I will. You don't think we should that. have the two be different? OK. Yeah, I don't think we should have the two be different. I think, I mean, what I do think we should do is we should try to make it make sure that they're the hooks necessary uh, for someone to be able to build that are available. Uh, so like we're not basically allow make sure we're exposing what we need to if we need to expose anything uh to allow someone to hook in and say like cool i want to you know here's all the arguments let me process this and make a pretty string uh um, yeah that was, that's that, a good and, point yeah i think we should was, try to make sure we do that i think that was an original goal right to make it so they could build like a more powerful argument parser on top of yes yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, did, I just had, yeah, totally. I, I just had this aha moment that like, maybe I don't want a more powerful argument parser. Maybe I just mm-hmm. want the strings that you would, I just want like the yeah, help output from that argument, from that yeah. argument parser, yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. And like being able to just make that help output thing as a dev dev and then like build that as output 
is uh I think a, a, a good goal for us. I and I don't think that needs to that doesn't need to ship yet. Um, I'm sure we can figure that out. Um, but making that agree. making sure we have that in mind, I think is good. April, so February. We still have a few days left in February. I I don't know. Let's. I guess I feel bad because I've pinged Darcy a few times now, and I'm just guessing he's really busy with work. So I, I also don't friends. want to. <laughs> yes. I also don't want to move too far ahead without him because it's frustrating because he's yeah. put so much work into this, right? So yeah. I, I, I think we should not be frustrated if we end up hitting node 19 and we shouldn't yeah. put too much pressure on Darcy, I think. Be, yeah, well, let's, 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 let's yeah. still aim, aim for April. Um, I'm going to have a little bit more free time. My, my calendar is freed up a little bit more, so I will definitely try to look at uh, what, what's going on here and move things forward. And maybe as I get a better handle, I can ping Darcy with very specific things to look at um, and see if he's got, you know, two minutes or 10 minutes to, to, to pop in and, and check, you know, comment on bits. That sounds great because I think the code base is getting pretty clean. I think there's just these couple couple areas of, of reaching uh, consensus on. Yeah. So. Do we do we want do we want to have like a main tracking issue of like these are the things that we want to have consensus on before we ship it? Or like that milestones one? or whatever. I, I guess we do have a milestone for merging into Node. Uh, I don't know how much we've maintained that, but yeah, something like that would be helpful. And also, you know, I don't have like a horse in this race, and I don't build many CLIs, so I'm just gonna <laughs> happy to be like working through it. But um, some of the things that we're thinking are, uh, 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 you know, the directions we'd like to take and the decisions uh, based on some of these comments and PRs. If we could document that too, it'd be helpful for me when I'm trying to dig in further as well. Cool. That sounds good. I, I think some of the, like, there's somewhere I'm like, if you look at some of the closed PRs too, I think there's some good information because like, like I added support for negative numbers so that I could implement that feature in Yarks and a couple of people make a strong case not to have negative numbers. And I'm like, okay, I'll just, I'll try to implement that in Yarks. Like I don't think I need it. It's not a, not a blocker for me. So I'm probably not gonna, I'm probably going to suggest we just compromise on not having negative numbers, and I'm going to try to figure out how to do it in in Yargs without it being supported in Parsargs. I'm sure, going to try to figure out how to do it a step up from Parsargs is what I'm getting at. Like the the idea that you can have some of these things built up a layer, mm -hmm. and but but that issue where we kind of just argue about whether or not we should support negative numbers is interesting because that argument will probably come up again with you with, with people. Right. So, yeah. Um, who is it? Shadow? Is it shadow spawn? Is that the, that's yes. not his actual name for sure. But no, John, 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 Gee, I'm guessing. John Gee. Yeah. He's been referencing the POSIX manual on how to write good CLIs quite a bit. Which, oh, he's maintainer of commander and n. Yeah, gotcha. yeah. So he's been really helpful, and, and I like that. He, I like that. Uh, I like that he's been making the case to, when in doubt, try to do stuff similar to POSIX because mm -hmm. Unix has been a thing for forty-five years or something. So uh, we've yeah. kind of defaulted kind of, with some of our other stuff too, like uh, the yeah. R and CP and things like that. So yeah, yeah, cool. So I don't know. I guess actually there is, uh, I can try to move some more stuff into the milestone, and but anyone should feel comfortable moving stuff into the milestone who wants to. Yeah. Uh, and I think we should yeah. be pretty sparing in what we call blockers. Like, like we should really try to hone in on these things that actually are go no go. Like, mm -hmm. like I think. Yeah. Uh, I'm also making a post merge into Node.js milestone, if that's okay. Sure. Uh, that, sounds, that sounds great. Uh, just so we can have like this ambiguation there and don't have to like, if something's already flagged into that, we can know that this is like, cool, we don't need to worry about this quite. Uh, we can worry about it, but we don't need to worry about it quite yet. That sounds good. Cool. Um, awesome. Hey. I think I'm gonna go have some junk food then for at the end of our agenda. Yes, we are. Yeah, I got awesome. a I got a dog, but I, which has nice. been keeping me pretty tired. Uh, what kind? What'd you get? Ooh, I think it's like a Jack Russell 
pitbull oh mix or, maybe, or sorry maybe it's like a jack russell i guess staffordshire terrier which looks kind of like a pitbull but here, oh. i'm gonna show you uh we got it from like a rescue in waterloo but he was flown in from mexico wow he, he, so it's been a i think a little rough transition for him since it's been really cold here but uh, <laughs> yeah we've got he's be doing okay yeah we've got a chihuahua who hates the the snow and the cold and doesn't want to be out there at all but yeah i'm gonna paste a picture of him looking grumpy but this isn't he doesn't always look grumpy uh, <laughs> Here we go. So, so we're, we got like these rubber. Do you put uh, boots on your dog in, in the well, we try, but he winter, Joe? He doesn't like it at all now. I saw and you have a dog in the background too, Ian. So. Yep. Yeah, she does not like wearing any kind of clothing, even though it's the winter and it's freezing. And I'm like, I'm trying to help you. <laughs> and she yeah. Just, yeah, fights me every step of the way. So, yeah, our chihuahua <laughs> literally just fell over. It was like, I don't know what these things are on my feet, but I can't use my legs anymore. <laughs> <laughs> he like adapt. He he adapted pretty fast. He just looks super sad. It's <laughs> yeah, funny. Uh, uh, anyways, yep. let's change my sleep schedule a bit. <laughs> yeah, I bet. All right. Well, this is great. I mean, I think this is a really productive conversation about the argument parsing. So it sounds like we're I keep saying we're on the home stretch, but I think we're actually on the a home stretch because yep. like play, playing with it has been working well. So let's just get folks to agree on a few more things. All right. Yep. Take care.